Good morning. Today we will discuss about double L fraction. In the last class we have discussed. In the last class we have discussed polarization, elementary idea about polarization, resistance law, etc. Today double refraction. In 1669, Erasmus Bartholinus discovered that when an unpolarized light beam is passed through a crystal of calcite, it splits up into two plain polarized light with their planes perpendicular to each other. One of the polarized beam travels undeviated through the crystal and is known as ordinary ray or X. O ray. This ray obeys Snell's law of refraction. The other beam which does not obey Snell's law is known as extraordinary ray or E ray. This phenomenon is called double refraction. So what is double refraction? It is quite clear from this description. So it was was discovered in 1669 by Asmus Bertholinus. So when an unpolarized light, you know what is unpo unpolarized light, we have discussed in the last class, unpolarized light beam is passed through a calcite crystal. It will be split up into two polarized light, two plane polarized light, one of which is obeying Snell's law and travels undeviated through the crystal. That ray is known as ordinary ray. And the other uh, polarized light which does not obey Snell's law uh, is known as extraordinary ray. This ordinary ray is represented as O ray and extraordinary ray is E ray. And this splitting above this um, polarized light into two plane polarized light when passing through a calcite crystal or such a crystal uh, calcite or quartz such phenomenon is known as double refraction and it is shown here in this picture this is unpolarized light when passing through a calcite or quartz crystal is it's uh, uh, plane polarized into two rays you can see uh, two plane polarized light in a, in this ray the plane of polarization is in this the plane of the paper and in this ray the plane of polarization is plane of polarization is perpendicular to the plane of the paper right, towards uh, in towards outside the plane of paper that is marked as dot okay and this you can see the ordinary ray is uh, moving undeviated from the direction of unpolarized light and this ray is deviated from the direction of polarized light and also uh, this ray obey Snell's law but this ray does not okay so this is this phenomenon is known as double refraction splitting above an unpolarized light into two plane polarized light then passing through crystals such as calcite or quartz okay so in doubly refracting crystals like calcite quartz etc the velocity of ordinary ray is same in all direction whereas the velocity of external ray is different in different direction Along a particular direction fixed in crystal, the two velocities are equal. This, is, this direction is called the optic axis of the crystal. A plane containing the optic axis of the crystal is called the principal plane. So, the velocities of this refracted, uh, W refracted radiations. Uh, that is that of ordinary ray is same in all direction but that of extraordinary ray is different in different direction but if we fix some direction in a crystals then the two velocities will be equal 
and that direction is called the optic axis of the crystal. Okay. So, along the optic axis of the crystal that we are used for double refraction, the uh, velocities of ordinary and extraordinary rays are same. Otherwise, it is different in different directions. So, the plane containing the optic axis of the crystal is called the principal plane. So, the plane in which the optic axis is passing is known as the plane of, uh, sorry, principal plane. The vibrations of the ordinary ray are perpendicular to the principal plane while the vibrations of the extraordinary ray are in the principal plane of the crystal. So here you can see and we have shown here a PQRS plane. So this PQRS plane is the principal plane. So uh, the, through this plane the optic axis is passing through this plane the optic axis is passing and the ordinary ray vibrates perpendicular to this plane and the extraordinary ray uh, vibrating parallel in this plane ok In case of calcite crystal, velocity of ordinary ray inside the crystal is lesser where compared to the velocity of extraordinary ray. Hence, the refractive index mu0 for ordinary ray is greater than the refractive index mu e for extraordinary ray. Uh, so, we have already said that the velocities are different. Mm. And inside the crystal, the ordinary ray velocity is lesser than that of the extraordinary ray. And so, the refractive index of the ordinary ray, which is represented by mu suffix O, uh, this is O uh, not 0, for ordinary is greater than that of extraordinary ray. Okay. When double refraction occurs in crystal and by some other, if we could eliminate one of the rays, we would obtain a polarized beam. We will see it soon, uh, how it can be eliminated. Uh, properties of ordinary ray and extraordinary ray. In, so, in brief, we can uh, categorize the properties of ordinary and extraordinary rays. That is, both ordinary rays and extraordinary ray uh, are plane polarized, but their planes of polarization are perpendicular to each other that, that we have seen from the picture uh, that is both are um, polarized in different planes so therefore uh, the plane of the, the, the plane of polarization of this plane is perpendicular to the plane of paper and this is in the plane of the paper plane of vibration uh, sorry plane of polarization this um, the mark shown here is the plane of vibration. So, the plane of polarization is perpendicular to the direction of plane of vibration. So, this plane of, uh, since the plane of vibrations are different for uh, these two rays, the plane of polarization is also perpendicular to each other. And Okay. Here's the refractive they travel at different velocities through the crystal, hence the refractive index of the crystal for ordinary ray is different from that of extraordinary ray that we have seen. Uh, within the crystal, the ordinary ray travels at the same speed along all directions, hence the refractive index of the crystals for the ordinary ray is constant and the wavelength of the ordinary ray is spherical. But the extraordinary rays travel at different speeds and hence the refractive index is different in different directions. Its wavelength is ellipsoidal. Mm. So, uh, since it is uh, because of the change in the refractive indices values of this ordinary and ex extraordinary rays, uh, 
the wavefront of these waves will be different in shape because in same wave same velocity means they travel and they move in same phase so that their wavefront appear uh, together that is they will appear like a sphere spherical shape that is all the points will be uh, reaching the same phase at the same time so the shape will be circular and in the case of extraordinary rays since they have different velocities they uh, their phase will be different at some uh, at some particular point that means they reach different uh, points at different times so it will form Sorry, ellipsoid. Uh, the crystals exhibiting double, double refractions are known as doubly refracting crystals. Uh, Bio fringes is measured as the difference between the refractive indices for ordinary ray and extraordinary ray. So, if we are measuring the difference between the refractive indexes of ordinary and extraordinary ray, and that is the measurement of biofringence. Bio so, we have already defined the uh, optic axis. Now, uniaxial and biaxial crystals. In certain doubly refracting crystals, there is only one optic axis. Such crystals are called uniaxial crystals. Uh, examples are calcite and quartz. But in some other doubly refracting crystals, there are two optic axes. Uh, they are called biaxial crystals. Mica, cane sugar are examples of biaxial crystals. And we have already said that when double refraction occurs in a crystal and by some method if we could eliminate one of these rays then we get a plane polarized wave plane, mm, uh, if we are eliminating any one of this beam we will get a plane polarized beam so a simple method for eliminating one of the beams uh, either extraordinary ray or ordinary ray is through selective absorption and that property is called dichorism. So another method for eliminating one of the polarized beam is by total internal reflection. Uh, that means uh, the two beams have different velocities and hence different refractive indexes in, inside the crystal. So if we can sandwich a layer of material whose refractive indices uh, lies between mu0 and mu e then for one of the ray this layer acts as a rare medium as this ray passed through this crystal is incident on the layer at an angle greater than the critical angle the ray is totally internally reflected and hence not transmitted this is the method used in equal prism to eliminate ordinary ray and transmit extraordinary ray. So, either we can eliminate uh, one of this ray by dichorism method that is by absorption method, selective absorption method in which we will use some material uh, in order for absorbing one of this plane polarized light so that only one ray is transmitted to the other side so that we can eliminate one ray and the another method is by total internal reflections. So, what we are doing is, uh, since these two waves have different velocities, they have different um, refractive indices. So, if we, are, um, if we sandwich a layer of material uh, whose refractive index lies between mu0 and mu e, um, then this layer will act as a rarer medium uh, for one of these rays. So, what will happen is when it is falls on this medium from the denser medium, that is, uh, uh, from the um, medium from which it is coming then what will happen uh, if it incidents on a critical angle greater than the critical angle uh, then total internal reflection will take place for that particular ray and that ray will not uh, transmit it instead it will get totally internally reflected so that uh, 
by this method also. So this is one method for eliminating the um, one of the rays from this double ring refracted rays. So this can be done by Nicol prism. Okay. Now we can discuss about positive and negative crystals. So we have seen that wavefronts of this ordinary and extraordinary are different and spherical wavefronts are obtained for ordinary rays and ellipsoid for oh, <coughs> ellipsoid for uh, extraordinary ray because of the uh, difference in their velocities. Okay. So according to Huygens, a point source of light in doubly reflective medium is the origin of true wavefronts. For ordinary rays, the velocity of light is same in all direction and hence the wavefront is spherical. So we have discussed this uh, this before. But for extraordinary rays, the velocity varies with the direction and hence uh, the wavefront is ellipsoidal. Uh, the velocities of extraordinary ray and ordinary ray are equal along the direction of opposite, uh, sorry, optic axis. We have seen all this. Uh, so for calcite crystal, velocity of a, a extraordinary ray is greater than velocity of ordinary rays. That is, we can say, represent this, V E is greater than V O, velocity of extraordinary. Hence, the ordinary spherical wavefront lies inside the extraordinary ellipsoid. Since VE is greater than VO. So the wavefront will be wavefront of extraordinary uh, uh, wavefront of uh, since velocity of extraordinary ray is greater than VO, uh, it moves faster. So it will be outside and that of ordinary rays will be inside. Okay, so this is the picture. Mm. With this way, uh, but at the optic axis, this velocity will be same, so it will be touching at the point of optic axis. At the other points, the velocity will be different, and uh, the for the ordinary rays, it, it lies inside the extraordinary rays because it moves faster, so it will be outside. Okay, these crystals are called negative crystals. The velocity V is maximum along the direction perpendicular to optic axis that is uh, this is the direction perpendicular to maximum axis this is the maximum velocity direction you can see it from the picture this is the maximum value uh, for uh, velocity of extraordinary rays okay mm, but for ordinary rays it is same in all direction uh, and in case of positive crystal you can see from the figure is okay. I will show you. Yeah, for positive crystal like quartz, the velocity of extraordinary ray is lesser than that for ordinary rays, so it will lie inside the ordinary ray wavefront mm, because this way an uh, ordinary ray will move faster than the extraordinary ray, so it will appear outside. And at the optic axis, the velocity will be same so that it will touch each other and the maximum uh, and the minimum velocity of the extraordinary ray occur at the um, direction perpendicular to the optic axis. Okay, so these are op um, negative and positive crystals. So here in this picture, we have uh, marked the extraordinary ordinary ray as this is the same picture uh, as shown above and we have tabulated the uh, difference, main differences of positive and negative crystals here. Uh, so the refractive index for extraordinary ray is greater uh, for positive crystal and is lesser for negative crystal. Uh, this table, uh, we have discussed these tables. Mm, already uh, in descriptive manner just because so you just look at this table uh, here the one point uh, we have discussed biophysics is positive for positive crystal and it is negative for 
uh, negative crystals because it is the difference between the refractive indices of the uh, two rays. So, um, according to the uh, natural is positive and negative crystals, its value is positive for positive crystals and negative for negative crystals. So, you can see it uh, here. Okay.